When it comes to the well-known lure makers, we often associate one particular lure with that company. Think about Cotton Cordell and the Big O. How about Bill Lewis and the Rattle Trap? Or let's not forget Smithwick Lures and the Devil's Horse. But I've often found that there are some unique baits from those well-known companies that for whatever reason have been lost to time. So today on Retro Bass, we're going to look at some unknown offerings from some well-known companies with a particular focus on old school crankbaits. Retro bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about bill dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray-Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40-year-old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Bass boat making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassing. Well, this bait has been very hot as of late, probably thanks to a certain professional bass fisherman who's been talking about it a pretty good bit. And of course, I'm talking about the pre Rapala Wigglewort. Boy, uh, even after all these years, this thing still catches a ton of fish and fetches a pretty penny online, thanks in large part to that beautifully jacked up lip. And when you think of storm lures, it's really hard to think beyond this bait. But recently, I picked up a very unusual offering from Storm called the Bug Plug. <laughs> Yeah, this thing looks like an oversized beetle, which is pretty wild, but you can see it still has that, well, very Wigglewort-esque bill. Man, this thing is a, such a cool, cool looking bait. I have no doubt it would catch fish. Uh, it is pretty hard to come by, truth be told, and actually is even more expensive than the OG Wigglewort online. Here is a look at the chug bug next to the OG Wigglewort, and yeah, I've got a feeling that these two have a pretty similar action. Fred Arbogast is not particularly known for their crankbait offerings, but if I was hard-pressed to identify one Arbogast crank, it would be this, the classic mud bug. This is a discontinued profile, and man, I wish they came back out with it because I just love, love this bait. I just love the unique crawfish pattern to it, um, both in the design and also that sort of uh, naturalistic paint job. And of course, you can't forget that really classic scallop tail metal lip. But there is a crankbait from Fred Arbogast that you may not have heard of, and it is this one called the Tipsy. This thing probably borders the line between a topwater and crankbait, but I'll put it in the crankbait category because it does have that little diving lip. It looks like what they did is they took a standard bait fish profile, oh that's sweet, and they turned it on its side. Uh, this thing I imagine runs pretty shallow and looking up from the fish's perspective, yeah it probably looks like a little shad flopping around on the surface. Check out the Arbogast Tipsy next time you're on eBay. Man, they are rare, but they are cool. If you were to ask AI to draw an image of a crankbait from the 1980s or 90s, well, there's a good chance you'd have something looking a whole lot like a Bomber Model A in an OG Fire Tiger pattern. Bomber has a couple of classic crankbaits out there, but this to me is the most iconic of the bunch. But... In my hands, I have a bomber that you may not have heard of, and man, it's one that I wish they would come back out with. This is called the Bomber Smiling Minnow, and man, look at that glorious, glorious largemouth bass profile and paint job. This is a sweet little uh, sort of medium diving crankbait. You could probably throw this thing on some 12 pound test line and man, catch a mess of bass in that six to eight foot range. It also came in a saltwater version and I've got one as well. Same Smiling Minnow profile, except it's definitely a little bit bigger and it's got those stout saltwater hooks. So what do you think? I wish Bomber would re-release this awesome obscure crankbait. 
Rebel has a number of well-known contributions to the crankbait market, including the humpback, the crawfish, and this bait, the deep we are. You gotta love that lip. But here is a Rebel crank that you may not have heard of. This is called the Racket Shad, and it is a pretty unique lipless crankbait. Uh, on the surface, it sort of resembles a Bill Lewis rattle trap, but look at the crazy belly on that. I have thrown this bait, and it has a very unique, very wide wobble compared to some of the standard lipless crankbaits. It's a super cool discontinued bait from Rebel, and it came in some really cool colors. Not just this sort of standard Rebel vac metal gold, but also this one, a really nice sunfish bluegill pattern. Ooh, look at that purple. And also this one, probably one of the sickest orange crawfish pattern crankbaits I have seen. Well, when you think of redwood cedar and pose crankbaits, there's probably two that come to mind. First would be the super cedar line made famous by crankbait master David Fritz. And the other one would be this, the RC series. Of course, popularized by Rick Klun after he won a Bassmaster Classic on this exact bait. This is a cool bait, but here is one from Pose that you may not have heard of called the Nervous Miracle. This is a really sweet and simple shallow water crankbait. It is one piece wood construction, no rattles, and it's got this really nice metal squared off diving lip. Man, this thing really accelerates in shallow water and whew, I do miss this one. Perhaps no single crankbait has ever changed the face of crankbait fishing like this bait. The Big O from Cotton Cordell. And when you think of Cotton Cordell, it's really hard to think beyond this particular bait. But here is a more rare discontinued offering from Cotton Cordell that, man, you may not have heard of. This is called the Huncho, and it was Cotton Cordell's answer to the Rebel Humpback. It is a really nice one-piece crankbait. It's got a nice molded in lip and it definitely has that humpback style profile. It's got a nice sort of low frequency OG rattle and came in some really classic Cotton Cordell colors like this uh, green shad. Ooh, look at that one. <laughs> this one I believe is a bar fish of sorts. And this one, I don't even know what to call this color, but it is like black in the middle and orange and yellow on the top and bottom. Yeah, the Huncho can definitely catch them today, and it is one that I probably need to throw a little bit more often. Walk down the aisle of any Bass Pro, and it's easy to see that Strike King is still a heavyweight contender in the modern crankbait market. But here is a pretty popular one from back in the day, a shallow running crankbait from KVD. While you might recognize this Strike King, here is one that I guarantee you haven't seen in a while. This is called the Psycho Scout, a really unique offering from Strike King that probably came out around the time that they were selling the Spence's Scout. This is a really cool crankbait. It has a nice diving lip and a really interesting uh, almost race car-esque profile to it. You gotta love that eye. Notice how that's sort of indented. So this one came in some pretty cool colors back in the day, including this one. It's sort of an orange side with a yellow top. Uh, this one right here with more of a tan sides, orange belly, and brown top. I, I don't know the name of that one. A nice fire tiger pattern. And probably my favorite, and a color that you don't see too often in crankbaits, a nice classic frog pattern. <laughs> I love the Psycho Scout, and man, I think this could totally catch a bass today. Truth be told, when you think of head and lures, you really think of their extensive line of topwaters, like the Zara Spook, the Torpedo, and the Lucky 13. 
But if you are pressed to identify one head and crankbait, well, you'd probably talk about this one, the classic Big Bud crankbait. A very popular bait for sure, not necessarily the most well-known fish catcher, but iconic in its own way. But here is a head and crankbait that I picked up recently at a tackle show in Savannah, Georgia that you may not have seen before. This little bait is called the Head Hunter, and it is a medium to deep diving crankbait probably in that wiggle wart genre of crankbaits. It does have a diving lip similar to a wiggle wart. It's got one little difference we'll talk about in a second. And it's got that sort of bean shaped profile. A little bit more uh, accentuated than even a wiggle wart. On the bottom you can see it almost has a keel. But that is a neat, neat little crankbait that you don't see too often. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what the purpose of this hole is. Perhaps it's to uh, increase disturbance in the water. But yeah, a very unique feature of that bait. What I love about any headens in this era are the crazy colors it came out with. I love this ultra-realistic perch. <laughs> this wild gold metallic on brown. Just why? <laughs> Really nice pink herring bone on a glow. There's a pink herring bone on a chartreuse with a black bag. Whew. And perhaps my favorite orange crawfish pattern, crackleback. I've not had a chance to fish with the head hunter plug yet, but I've got a feeling anywhere a wiggle board would work. Man, this thing would work too. When you think of Bill Lewis, the name is really synonymous with this bait, the Rattle Trap. And I've got a feeling if you pulled 10 people, probably nine of them could not name a second bait from Bill Lewis. But here is a classic crank that you may not have heard of that went discontinued probably a number of years ago. This is called the Deep L from Bill Lewis and First things first before I open it, you gotta love that it comes in that classic Bill Lewis box that I miss so much with the Bill Lewis cartoon. Oh, I always loved him. This is a really nifty little crankbait. Sort of resembles, well, almost exactly resembles a Bandit 200 or a Deep Big O. It's got that look to it for sure, but it came in some well, very rattle trap esque colors. Although I haven't thrown this particular crankbait, I have zero doubt this thing would be a fish catcher. Uh, <laughs> but that being said, I might just keep this thing in the box and stick with my bandits for now. Well, these days, just about the only offering you can find from the Smithwick Lure Company is this bait, the Devil's Horse Topwater. Especially this time of year, this is a classic, classic bait. And I actually have one of these tied up on my rod for a fishing trip this week. But there is a discontinued Smith of Crankbait that you may not have heard of that I'm going to show you. This is called the Lobo. And it is a pretty rare and discontinued molded plastic crankbait from Smithwick. And yeah, if it looks a lot like a big O, I guarantee you the Smithwick is trying to capitalize on the alphabet crankbait craze. The Lobo has a really nice rattle. And that is not a standard plastic. That definitely has a much more of a, an old school thump to it. It is a classic though, big O style shallow diving fat body crankbait, but it came in some classic Smithwick color patterns with that classic Smithwick eye. Here's one in this pattern. Another more of a vac metal perch. And this green, which by the way, perfectly matches the devil's horse. I recently swapped out the hooks on a few of these Lobos and I plan to be throwing them this summer. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this little walk through some rare and obscure crankbaits from some of the well-known crankbait manufacturers. Drop a comment down below and let me know which of these baits you want to see a more detailed history of, or better yet, 
which of these baits you want to see me fish with. And if you're looking for some more old school content, you can click right here. Otherwise, I'll see you right back here, same time, same place. And until then, keep that carpet side up. And definitely, fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bass.